Today we want to have a closer look at a special Zeppelin, which should have become the successor of the popular LZ-127. The LZ-128. As we learned in the previous parts, the LZ-127 started as an experimental airship and was the first Zeppelin the Zeppelin company was allowed to build for themselves after the First World War. So they didn't really know how they would use LZ-127, so they prepared it for anything. They integrated lots of innovations and in the end it was flying to the North Pole, through deserts, frequently to North and South America, also through heavy storms and even around the world. And all that with passengers and cargo. For the design they were limited by their hangar size. They had three hangars in their Friedrichshafen Zeppelin factory at that time. The old iron double hangar from 1909 which allowed Zeppelin diameters of up to 14.9 meters. The so-called Bauhalle 1 from 1915, which then allowed diameters of up to 18.7 meters. And the Bauhalle 2 from 1916, which allowed war Zeppelins to have a diameter of 23.9 meters. For the LZ-127, they pushed it to the limit and built it in the same hangar with a diameter of 30.5 meters which left less than a meter space at each side. And they had to decide if they want the perfect aerodynamic teardrop shape or if they want more drag through a worse shape but more lift to be able to carry more things. For LZ-127 they decided for the latter. It could achieve amazing results but they always knew that the design isn't perfect. So with all these experiences from LZ-127 they were designing LZ-128 and it was clear that they would now go for the perfect teardrop shape, which meant they needed a new hangar to build this new Zeppelin. So already in 1929, so just a few months after LZ-127 was finished in Bauhalle 2, they demolished the old double hangar and the smaller Bauhalle 1. Instead, they built the new, much bigger hangar in 1930 and called it Bauhalle 1 as well. This one allowed diameters of more than 40 meters and lengths of up to 270 meters. So the idea for LZ-128 was to roughly keep the length of LZ-127, but with a teardrop shape, which resulted in a diameter of 38.7 meters and hence a volume of 155,000 cubic meters, which was 50% more than LZ-127. At the same time, they stick to proven design features like the middle catwalk to reinforce the whole structure and they use Blaugas again to drive the petrol engines. As you heard in the previous parts, Blaugas has around the same density as air, so it doesn't matter for the lift of the ship if the tank is full or not, in this case the huge gas bags. But because of the fact that there are gas bags for hydrogen and gas bags for Blaugas, we cannot just use the overall gas volume to calculate the lift, like on other Zeppelins. Anyway, at the same time Britain was building two remarkable airships, R100 and R101. These ships had a number of innovative design features which we can later find on German Zeppelins as well. The R101 had roughly the same length as LZ127, but a teardrop shape and 156,000 cubic meter gas volume. Although we have to say here that the British teardrop shape was different to the German teardrop shape. The Germans had a flatter nose and the biggest diameter further forward and this shows you the difference in wind tunnel results at that time. Anyway, the British design featured the passenger cabin inside the hull for a lot more space, a smoker launch which was new on a hydrogen airship and diesel engines so there is no ignition system anymore. And on the R100, they used engine cars with two engines each, one in pull and one in push configuration. The Zeppelin design office did not just discuss designs with the British side, Egner himself also visited the British airships in Cardington. We will talk about the British airships and their problems in detail in another video. The LZ-128 was also designed with the passenger cabin inside the hull and with dual engine cars in pull and push configuration. The Zeppelin company used the proven Maybach VL2 V12 engines, which can also run with Blaugas. Instead of five engines and five engine cars, like on LZ127, they now used eight engines in four engine cars. That meant less drag and 60% more power. 
together with the lower drag because of the better shape and the bigger volume, a higher range at higher speed and higher cargo capacity was the target. Then on 5th of October 1930, one of the biggest airship disasters happened. The R101 crashed and burned down near Paris on its way to India. 48 of the 54 people on board died, not because of a relatively slow crash, but because of the intense hydrogen fire. In comparison, at the Hindenburg disaster, 35 of the 97 people on board died. The design of the R101 was ambitious and aimed at pushing the limits. When the ship was done, it was almost 10 tons too heavy and tail heavy. Additionally, they had a problem to keep the lift since gas bags were ruptured at the beam structure. Protecting gas bags was the reason of extensive design work at the Zeppelin company with only rounded structures towards gas bags and nets to avoid gas bags from rubbing on other surfaces. To compensate for the higher weight, the British engineers reduced the beam structure, which left even more sharp rivets and other structures exposed to gas bags. Even Egner, boss of the German Zeppelin company, pointed this out as a potential hazard to the British airship designers. They said they would use padding and it would be fine. Finally, they decided to extend the ship to gain more lift, since it was designed to fly to India and in tropical temperatures you lose lift. Additionally, the whole project was already more than two years behind and they rushed into a first long flight to India. Outstanding tests should have been done on the way. The ship was fully loaded, again struggled for lift, the outside hull was already damaged over the British Channel, they experienced rain over France, which made the ship even heavier, probably gas bags were ruptured and they lost even more lift at the front. They relied on dynamic lift to climb again, but had no information about their altitude anymore and crashed into the ground, followed by a huge fire. Because the Secretary of State for Air, the Director of Civil Aviation and the Director of Airship Development were killed in the crash, the British airship program was effectively over with this disaster. Egna was on a test flight with LZ-127 to Berlin at that time got the message, landed immediately in Leipzig and was asked by British authorities to analyze the crash. The result for the ongoing LZ-128 design was that the Zeppelin company decided not to use hydrogen for their airships anymore, although at this point they were successfully flying with hydrogen for 30 years. The change to helium as lifting gas means that there is 8% less lift than with hydrogen. This required a complete redesign and already in November 1930, Egner told the press details about the new upcoming Zeppelin generation. The ship will need a bigger gas volume to compensate for the decreased lift. So it will have a larger diameter and will be longer. In addition to that, they will change to diesel engines to avoid having an ignition system, although helium doesn't burn. But because at this time there was only helium in the US and only in limited amounts, they thought it would be a good idea to eliminate this potential hazard as well, in case they don't get as much helium as they would need. More on that in the next part. So the new hangar for LZ-128 was already built, the design finished, the first generation of new beam structure were already done and the project was cancelled. The beams could be reused for the next project, which would become the biggest and most advanced airship in the world the LZ-129 Hindenburg. If you enjoyed this video, please consider to become a B-Sport Club member for early access and more videos like this. See you at the next one.